Zion's overpowering athleticism has taken the league by storm as of late, and with two players next to him able to create shots themselves in Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball, that makes New Orleans a dangerous lower seed. The young Pels are only two games back of reaching the play-in tournament, and since they've shown off their potential to lead the West one day, here's why you should look out for Zion and the Pelicans. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. If you haven't already and you're a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, you definitely came to the right place. So please subscribe and be sure to click the bell so you get notified every time I upload. Now let's get into this. Zion Williamson has gone from being overrated a few years ago to being damn underrated this year. He's performed like one of the best players in the league, but he's just not getting the respect he deserves this year. Last night against the Nuggets, he extended his streak of scoring 20 plus points to 22 straight games, the longest of any player in the NBA this year. The man leads all forwards in field goal percentage by far, and while he came up short of getting the W for his team, Zion dropped a career high 39 points last night, exploding past his matchup at will. Williamson missed just three shots as he was 16 for 19 from the field overall. And these outings are nothing new for the Duke product, as Williamson's already hit the 30-point plateau in 11 games this season. He's doing more than just scoring, too. He's also recorded four double-doubles over his last 11 appearances, a span in which he's also scored 23 or more points each time. One of the keys to the sophomore looking like a top 10-15 to 15 player in the league is how he's being used within the Pelicans offensive system. In late January, the Pelicans began experimenting with using Zion as a point forward and first option. Up until that point in the season, the Pelicans were the 20th ranked offense in the NBA. Since that point, Zion is averaging superstar numbers on ridiculous efficiency. 27 points, 7 boards, and 5 dimes per game on 64% shooting from the field. Only 5 players are averaging those numbers across this stretch. Giannis, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, Kawhi Leonard, and of course, Zion Williamson. Even though the hype and attention on this man isn't like it was in his rookie year and when he played at Duke, it's evident that Zion's lived up to the hype of being the future face of the league. Last season going into the bubble, Lonzo Ball was one of the most disappointing players in the NBA. He had a free throw percentage similar to Shaq's, he had no confidence in his driving ability, and he would constantly pass up shots instead of taking it to the rack himself. But after the Pels missed the playoffs in embarrassing fashion in the bubble, Lonzo came out and said he would chase the most improved player award in 2021. While he hasn't been quite the most improved player of the year, this is the best Lonzo ball we've ever seen. As you're seeing on the screen right now, his stats have vamped across the board from his underwhelming 2019-20 season, and the man just looks a lot more comfortable. Most significantly, his deep range shot has progressed, as there have been few better shooters in the NBA than Lonzo this season. Among all players in the league taking at least three three-pointers per game, Lonzo ranks eighth in percentage behind the likes of Stephen Curry and Duncan Robinson. He started the season struggling from distance, but he's turned that around and been in elite company shooting the ball this year. Lonzo turned down a rookie extension this past offseason, and it's going to pay off as he's going to get an offer in the ballpark of $80 million over four years as a restricted free agent in the 2021 summer. After a swirl of trade rumors, the Pelicans ended up keeping Lonzo, and they'll be able to match any contract he's offered. Expect Lonzo to test the market though and cash in with a big contract in just a few months time. For right now though, in half court scenarios, Lonzo's in more of an off ball role for New Orleans as Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram are usually tasked with initiating the offense. And Ball has thrived spacing the floor out and working off those more gifted off the dribble creators. Lonzo's underrated defensively, but you can't forget what Ball provides on this end. He's an engaged, versatile, and laterally quick defender. He has elite instincts in transition, and Lonzo's developed into a talent who can and will fit within about any NBA system. Recently, the former Laker dropped a career-high 17 assists, displaying to the fullest extent that his passing keeps the ideal flow to the Pelicans' offense. New Orleans ranks 7th in the NBA in offensive rating, and the rest of the teams in the top 8 around them are all championship contenders. They've blown some leads and lost some close ones in their last 10 games, 
but one dominant stretch of play recently that they had said a lot about how good the Pelicans can be. From February 3rd to March 1st, the Pels had the best offensive rating in the NBA and shot up to the 11th best net rating in the league. New Orleans went 8-7 in this stretch, with one of the toughest schedules in the league, winning by double digits against the two top teams in the NBA in the Utah Jazz and Phoenix Suns. Among some of the other top contenders that New Orleans has taken down in only the last two months include the Milwaukee Bucks and LA Clippers. So even though they have the 13th toughest schedule remaining, with 28 games left in the season, the young Pels have a chance to win the game on any given night, no matter who they're playing against. In terms of whether the Pelicans will sneak into the playoffs, while they're four games back of the Spurs right now, the Pels are only two games back of the 10th place Warriors for a shot at the play-in tournament. Another important thing to note about the Pels is the fact that all three of their best players in Ingram, Williamson, and Ball are all under the age of 23 and in their physical prime. That means the wear and tear of the 72 game grind isn't going to drain their energy like it would for a veteran ball club, but it's only going to strengthen their conditioning and chemistry. With the explosiveness of Zion in the half court and most prominently in transition, plus the smooth shot creating of the 2020 All-Star brand in Ingram to go along with the flashy quick twitch playmaking of the UCLA product Lonzo Ball, whether it's this season or not, Basketball fans in the Big Easy have a special decade ahead of them and get to witness one of the best young trios in the NBA. Before predicting if the Pelicans will make the playoffs, this next segment covers the Pelicans' improving role players, but to put it bluntly, the Pelicans' depth is severely lacking. They rank 24th among teams in bench scoring, and it's the main aspect that's keeping this team from being a top, legitimate playoff squad. However, at the deadline, the team did bring in a solid perimeter stopper in James Johnson, who'll take the pressure off Zion and Ingram defensively. And even though JJ Redick was moved to Dallas, the veteran sharpshooter JJ was actually having the worst shooting season of his career. But I have to give respect to the bench guard Josh Hart, who had a Wilt Chamberlain-esque performance against the Rockets a couple weeks ago, posting 20 points and 17 rebounds in a Pell's win. There's also some potential with my fellow Torontonian in Nikhil Alexander-Walker and the center Willie Hernan Gomez, who's done a solid job playing alongside Zion. So is this a playoff team in 2021, or will Zion and the Pels come up short for a second straight year? They'll have to get through some tough teams in the near future, but as I broke down, if this team shows up, their talent can swing a ball game no matter who's in front of them. But while fans in the Big Easy could be witnessing some playoff basketball this year, if the Pels can somehow find the rhythm that they had in February, Zion's second option in Ingram has been struggling recently, so I don't know if New Orleans has enough depth to find a way into the play-in tournament. But the point of this video was to lay out how the Pelicans have proved to the world that they're going to be a problem once GM David Griffin brings in a few new role players that fit into this system. You can follow the channel on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, as well as the writers for this video and myself, Adam Kahane, and Ian Kahinde on Instagram. Links are all in the description. Have a great day. This was dflow, and I'll see you next video.